Thank you for checking out the Media Marketing Podcast, a place where you can learn all things media and marketing related. Don't miss a beat in boosting your business and your brand. In each episode, you'll gain valuable insights, tools, and strategies to apply to your marketing efforts. And now your host, Brian Cargill. Sweet. Thank you, Stephanie, for bearing with me as we went through these technical difficulties. Um, note to self, never buy batteries from the dollar store. <laughs> and that coming as, what was it? That was like a six pack of batteries and uh, literally hold the life of one all together. So anyway, so here we, we go. we blocked in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Stephanie, thank you for coming on to the show. Um, I, I'll get right into reading your intro. I pulled this right from uh, your blog, so I'm going to be speaking as if I'm you. But hi, I am Stephanie, world traveler, photographer, and visual content creator from Germany who calls Portland, Oregon her home and travel hub. My passion is my passport and traveling makes my makes me smile since I started exploring the world on my own in 2007. With professional expertise in communications, the tourism industry, a big love for writing and photography, living abroad in South Africa and China, I created this blog to inspire and empower people to pursue their wonder lust. Stephanie, thank you for coming on to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is a pretty awesome intro and um, you know, be, what you do for a living um, is what a lot of people, I think, dream and aspire to do. Uh, when they, to be able to travel around, um, going to all these different places, experiencing different things all the time, and making a living doing that, um, I think that's a, that's a huge dream. So thank you for coming on the show. I'm excited to hear, you know, kind of your journey and uh, what you've been able to do to make that possible. Yeah, thanks for having me, Brian. So as you already read out in the intro, I'm a travel blogger from Germany originally, and I moved to Portland around six months ago. And yeah, traveling and storytelling is my passion. And I've traveled around 50 countries so far, still counting. And I think I'm actually, it's exactly 50 countries at the moment. Um, I've lived abroad as well, so I've lived in South Africa and China, actually just before I moved to the US together with my husband. And yeah, I'm the publisher of the bilingual blog Smile for Travel. And yeah, in addition to what I'm doing on my blog, um, I'm an experienced communications professional with a 10 year track record in producing online and social media content within the travel industry most of the time. That means that I've worked in corporate environments for PR and content marketing manager for one of Germany's largest travel companies for a couple of years. And yeah, I also work as a freelancer and brand ambassador, content creator. And this is what I'm doing now, actually. So that means I still work with companies, but on a yeah, independent content creator basis. And I work with brands, tourist sports, agencies, for example, to tell authentic stories around their products. Um, yeah, and help to drive their brand story in the end. So yeah, what I'm doing is a lot of things actually. So my portfolio ranges from content creation, online editing and copywriting. I do photo and video production. I also do social media campaigns. And yeah, from time to time, I also organize events. <laughs> wow, okay, yeah, you keep yourself pretty busy. <laughs> and uh, I think that's awesome. And. You know, I said this earlier, but uh, you walk the walk and you talk the talk. So you're actually you know, creating the content for yourself and you're creating it for the people that you work with. So I think that's really awesome. And then I guess it's a lot of that's within the vein of travel. Um, what's that been like? Is that, is that pretty fun working with these groups? Uh, is it challenging? Um, is it exhausting? It's actually a lot of fun. And I think that's the reason why I'm still doing it because I established the blog a couple of years ago already, so when I was still working in a full-time job, so I did the blog as a side project and uh, yeah, the stories I wrote about and I shared with my readers, they were created during my own vacation days and during weekend trips and stuff like that. And yeah, I'm still doing it and I started to professionalize it now. Um, and work as an independent content creator and it's a lot of fun but you're right it's from time to time it's also pretty exhausting 
because yeah, um, actually one of the biggest challenges is from time to time really to unplug and to disconnect because as I'm traveling and traveling is my job, I, of course, I'm surrounded by beautiful nature, bustling cities and a lot of things are happening during my travels and of course I always have a story in mind when I'm somewhere or when I'm sitting and seeing a beautiful sunset, I want to take a picture and it's just like that. So from time to time it's challenging, challenging to really disconnect and breathe deeply and really enjoy the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's awesome. But it sounds like your passion really comes through. Like you're doing something that's in alignment with like, you know, what makes you happy and what gives you fulfillment, which I think is awesome. Um, but yeah, I would imagine like that, that's one of those things. Like if you're always like kind of people expect a, a certain level of presence on on the social channels, I would imagine all the time or like, you know, some frequency, whether that's, you know, a daily Instagram story or making these posts. Um, and then, yeah, you've been, to, you've been to Hawaii and I noticed you had all this you know, great content from Hawaii, but yeah, um, being able to you know, go to a tropic place and put your feet in the sand and just hang out, I can yeah, I imagine it could be challenging. Yeah, um, it's always a mixture of both, yeah. But it's fun for me, I like to take pictures and I love writing about it and sharing it, so it's always a mixture of um, yeah, fun and kind of work and of course I still enjoy that I have the possibility and the chance to do this for a living. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Um, tell me a little bit more, uh, I, you mentioned 2007 uh, being your first trip, like first big trip, and that's what inspired this entire thing for the most part? Yeah, it feels like the passion for traveling has kind of always been inside me. Um, it's funny because I grew up in a really, really small village in Germany so um, actually in the former eastern part of Germany, so imagine if the wall hadn't come down, I wouldn't be able to travel actually. And yeah, think of my parents and my grandparents, they didn't have these opportunities and travel opportunities. I don't know if this also comes yeah, to the fact that I really love uh, traveling. But yeah, 2007, I was only 21, uh, I went on my first big adventure. So I went to South Africa, to Cape Town, and lived there for six months. And I think everybody around me besides me was really kind of scared and really worried about it. And actually, I don't know how my parents survived this, but <laughs> yeah, in the end they visited me and everything turned out well. But yeah, I think this trip um, really changed my perspective. I, I went there to do an internship um, while I was still studying. So I studied media management and honestly speaking, I don't know how much this trip really helped for my studies. <laughs> but what I can tell for sure is that I learned so much for my life and yeah, it was an awesome trip and an awesome adventure. And I think this also, yeah, kind of is a big milestone for my all my travels which came afterwards and also the fact that I not only love to travel a lot and you know I don't want to my goal isn't to see and visit as many places as I can but I really enjoy the time living abroad and to die, dive deeper into the culture and the people and everything so yeah, I think the six months in South Africa already established this kind of dream to live abroad as well. Yeah, that's awesome. And I love how as soon as you were saying like the best bit, they flip on the blender <laughs> and like you guys can barely hear us, but no, I thought that was great. And I think that's really cool. So you did a six month stint in South Africa just um, on your own, like you didn't really ask permission it sounds like from your parents and just went for it. Um, yeah, I <laughs> actually only informed everybody that yeah. I'm going to do this now. <laughs> that's awesome. But that sounds like a really cool place. So I've been to Cape Town. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, and you know they have a you know, tabletop mountain. Yeah. I uh, walked up there in, in a day, and then I was only there for a couple, you know, I went to the Cape Times, which is like their New York Times, and then I went on safari the rest of my time there. But uh, Afrikaans is like a pretty interesting yeah, language. You know, it so, is. You know, since we've been there, it'd be fun to just like dive into it a little bit if the viewers, you know, I know they want marketing and media tips, but it'd be fun to talk about <laughs> this. Um, 
So when I heard Afrikaans, it's like a mixture of so many different languages. And like, there's an English word in there, maybe like one out of like one out of 100 words. For you, like for German words, like could you pull out any? Because it's a blend. Of, it's a fusion of like German and Dutch and yeah. maybe like Portuguese or something like that. Like one other language I think is in there. Yeah, it's a big mixture. And Dutch, I think it's most similar to Dutch. Yeah. And as German is also a bit or at least for foreigners. Dutch and German sound similar. Yeah. Yeah, but, but actually, it actually doesn't have any German. No, nah, you can't oh, really gosh, understand like it. No, a, yeah, okay, no, yeah. you, you cannot really understand it. But as you said, there are a couple of words when you hear them, they make sense, or you maybe understand one or two words, but you don't get the context because you un don't understand the language. But there are funny similar words. I think one of that is lecker or something which is um, yummy uh, and in german is also lecker and i think in dutch is lecker and yeah okay words like that. Thank, you, thank you for catching me a little <laughs> bit there meeting me halfway yeah it's uh yeah it's always interesting when you, you hear like different languages and everything of all the cities you've been to which one did you feel was like the most international oh wow this is that, like you heard a ton question. of different languages being spoken all at once like maybe five six seven i don't know maybe that's how i identify international that's a really good question actually I don't think I have an answer for that I mean what I can tell you is that for China for example Shanghai of course is I think the most international city within China because yeah so many I mean compared to the rest of the country um, many people speak English it's still kind of a certain level which is not really international but compared yeah. to other cities in China Shanghai would be the most international city interesting and about that because I was like you know I don't know what it is in my mind but like Hong Kong always like you know yeah. comes up as like an international hub yeah but yeah definitely know. yeah and Hong Kong yeah you're right Hong Kong is I mean they speak English there this is kind of a different story anyway so yeah Hong Kong is really international like but talking about mainland China, Shanghai, Shanghai, I think, would be the one. I'll have to go there. Do you, um, so when you go to a place, and I, I do want to dive into like maybe you know how many places you've been to, what's kind of the goal. <laughs> but when you go to a place, how, how do you best like to experience the culture? Um, yeah, most of the time I try to, to take my time. And of course, I do a lot of research before I go. So... Typically, I will read a lot about the city or the country before I travel there to be informed and to have a certain level of expectations. I always try to not inform myself too much because I still want to go with the flow and really get inspired on my own. And I think nowadays this is kind of hard with all the Instagram and blogs and everything out there. If you really want to do some research, you find a lot of things online and of course I'm doing the same I'm also trying to inspire people but on, not only that I with my blog and the content I create I also um, try to empower people to really pursue their own travel dreams and wanderlust so yeah and because I believe that discovering the world doesn't necessarily happen only because you're on a big trip like going on a sabbatical or take months off and you know leave everything behind and then go on a big trip I believe that yeah discovering the world happens in front of everyone's doorstep and I like that. yeah it's actually this is also one of the reasons why I started the blog because as I said I never was a yeah a digital nomad or something when I started the blog I had a full-time job so all the content I created was taken out of my own vacations and yeah and I wanted to show people that it's also possible to explore the world even if you work and only have a certain amount of time to travel but you can still go somewhere and yeah explore the world and dive in you know it's it's just a matter of how you do and I travel individually so yeah, I do a lot of research before I go and then I book everything like on my own and I don't 
yeah, I, I will buy train tickets and flight tickets and then the hotel here and another hotel there and then I will stay in the Airbnb and in a guest house. So yeah, and I try to really empower people um, to do the same. And that's why I create like itineraries and travel guides on my blog. So I don't only share my own experience and say, oh, I went here and it was so much fun. Look at my pictures. I really want to um, give some valuable information to my readers so that in the end they get inspired and then get enough information to kind of yeah make their own travel plans out of this. Yeah, that's awesome too. Yeah, you're kind of giving them some takeaways, some, some physical things that they could use. And um, so the itineraries that you send out, is it just the one that you experienced or do you kind of curate a little bit like, ah, uh, you know, if I were to do it again, maybe I would have added that in there. Do you make kind of a custom one for the audience? A big thank you to our sponsors over at songtub.com. That's right, song or music and a tub, like a bath, but more fun to say tub tub anyway you can check out song tub's website for any of your music needs in fact the song playing in the background right now is from song tub so why pick them over anyone else well they curate the music and i know the guys so that means i know that they're selecting great music for your project a lot of other companies will brag about how many songs they have maybe a hundred thousand two hundred thousand maybe even a million but Honestly, I don't have time for that. I don't have the time to just sit down and go next, 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 a song, not so great. You know, trying to figure out where the best music is. Songtub.com, great place to get your music. And now I'm excited to offer you the first month for free if you go to songtub.com slash pro, P-R-O. And we have a promo code for you. Yes, that's right. My name, your host, Brian, B-R-Y-A-N. And that will give you your first month free to have access to a huge music library that you can use towards your next video project, podcast, or any of your general audio needs. Anyway, back to the show. Um, I would say 80, 90% is what I really experience because I want to make sure that everything I write is kind of true and real and I it's hard for me to write about something I haven't experienced on my own. I mean, sometimes, you know, if I give advice how to get to different places and stuff, I maybe would also create a little and say, okay, I went by train, but you can also go by bus. And then what I do then, I would link to other websites so that the people can follow these links and then in the end find the information they need. So it's not about copying my um, itineraries, so I don't want to people copy my things. I mean, if I get um, comments that people did the same what they found on my blog, I mean, this is always great to read and good to, great to know that I inspired people to do the same. But it's not, you know, my goal that I, I want people to copy it. I want to give them advice so that they, in the end, can plan their own itinerary with that. Yeah, I think that's awesome. You're making things a lot easier for people, I believe. I um, hope so. <laughs> yeah, and then they get to kind of see the world through your lens, you know, uh, fi figuratively and literally, because you do the written portion and the photo aspect of it. Um, do both of those for your business now kind of go hand in hand, uh, the photo and text side of things, or is it yeah. still mainly the blog that you know, gets people pretty excited? It's both sides, yeah. Actually, I started with photography because when I really started the blog, I wanted to have a platform where I can share all my pictures because I've always been crazy <laughs> taking pictures. And then I added the writing. Um, but yeah, I started with photography, but now I think both goes hands in hand and it's kind of equal and yeah. I mean on Instagram, for example, it's a visual platform, so it's not that much content there, but on the blog there is the content. So if people find my content on Instagram, they will always have a chance to follow along and then get the insights on my blog. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so you kind of, yeah, help help kind of get people excited maybe with Instagram and then they go over to the blog to really deep dive into learning a little bit more yeah. um, and actually, you know, and then they can download those itineraries or download uh, some of those extra handouts that you provide. 
Um, that's really cool. And so you get to hear about some of those success stories along the way of people, you know, having a good experience and saying, hey, I did this too. Do people just, will they tag you uh, when they get to a spot or do they send you like a direct message? Yeah, or direct message. Um, yeah. yeah. All of the above. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that was going to be one of my questions was like, when you're living abroad, do you kind of find the balance between like um, sharing things with like the the local market or like building your brand locally versus globally because you you kind of have a local presence in Portland and you mm -hmm. have a local presence I think probably back home in Germany and some or like some other places like wherever you live for a good amount of time like six months to like a yeah. couple of years I would imagine you get somewhat recognition and credibility in that place um, do you treat those audiences differently or is it mm, not differently um, it, it's true yeah I still have um, yeah collaboration partners in Germany for example and now I'm living here in Portland of yeah. course I want to get started here and get yeah, into contact. Yeah, that's what I said, home yeah. is Germany, like this is home. Yeah, and is yeah. Like, home so, is wherever you're mm -hmm. you know, Yeah, home exactly is wherever I am at the moment yeah. and yeah, actually home changed <laughs> a yeah. lot of times during the last year so now Portland is home yeah, and home. travel hub, yeah. Yeah, that's, a anyway, <laughs> uh, but okay, very cool and so I think I kind of was curious, but you, but sometimes, so there's like kind of different um, types of travel where it's like you're, you're living in a place for a while and then there's traveling on the road, bouncing from one place to the next. Um, do you have any tips for being on the road when you're traveling? Um, you know, because I think a lot of people, I forget what the staff, the staff for American, the people in the U.S., Americans, is like 15% or 10 per, less than 10%, I believe, people have a passport. Oh. And so, um, what would you recommend for like getting people excited about wanting to go travel and then maybe addressing some of the things that hold people back from wanting to travel? Um, yeah, I, d I really try to, to create stories that inspire people and give them the impression that there is actually not much holding them back. And as I said, I think, um, yeah, traveling and discovering the world happens in front of our doorsteps. And this is actually, you can go for a hike. And now, I mean, living in Portland, of course, for me, it's even more exciting because I'm new to town and the area and everything. But Oregon is such a, an amazing state. And yeah, also like California and everything around, like America itself is so huge and there's so many places to discover. And I would really advise people just to go and to try it out because I think there can be a lot of fears and you know things you're not sure about how will that go and how will this go and I experienced it actually during all the years of traveling then in the end it doesn't turn out too bad and there is always a way to you know get around and yeah it, it's sometimes you really have to jump into the unexpected and then somehow it will work yeah oh man I know it's, it's kind of a rush you know you're out there and you're like you have an idea of what you're gonna do but then you have to have like some flexibility around whatever your schedule is and then yeah the things that you don't even anticipate that maybe you know the uber doesn't arrive when you wanted it to or the hotel's booked or the hostel is booked um, and that's part of the fun part. You, you get to like kind of. I, I like how in your intro you said on your. Uh, you traveled in 2007 on your own back, so it's like you're carrying yourself. Like you, you, you're on your own um, along the, on the along the process. Um, okay, so you would just kind of recommend to people just jump right in, like find a place, and then you know kind of do that a little bit of research, but don't give it yeah. away. I think everyone could get started kind of small. It's probably like this. I mean, you don't have to go and go for half a year or, you know, leave everything behind and just go for into the unexpected. But you can just, yeah, try to go for one week and just try something different. And, you know, if you used to go to, like, I don't know, um, big hotels before, then just go to a small town where there isn't a big hotel and really book a small guest house and then try to explore the surroundings rent a scooter or walk or do whatever but maybe just try the different things interesting that's awesome yeah i think that's great kind of yeah give, give it some variety and um kind of switch it up wherever you go 
Um, so I guess bringing it back to like kind of the media and the marketing side of things, you know, talking about your own background with uh, the travel industry, PR and marketing. Um, what I guess it was that, that was probably a pretty good experience to be able to translate some of those skills into what you do today. Most things you learn. Oh learn yeah, I've been learn. actually learning a lot over the last years because where I'm coming from, like profession-wise, is the content creation part. I worked in content marketing and PR and communications. So establishing the blog for me also meant to like getting into all the technical stuff and learning about SEO and all these things. So I actually learned a lot during the last years to be able in the end to host the blog and you know um, make it work all the time because there will always be kind of plugins crashing and unexpected things happening and yeah so the technical part yeah I, I haven't studied or yeah it wasn't part of my, my um, job so too much but yeah I kind of um, made it work. <laughs> no, I think that's great. And I think that's like really inspiring because like for my own journey, that's been a big part of it too is like, you know, I, I'm kind of curious, I'm interested in whatever this thing might be and then building up my own content and then learn using myself as like a, you know, as a test subject for that, <laughs> that I've, you know, experimenting, seeing what works and then I can take that knowledge and expertise and apply it to other individuals or other organizations, which is what it sounds like you've done with your career. Yeah. And it's always a great feeling if you try something new and then you put a lot of work into it and spend hours on figuring out why your blog isn't reachable anymore and what is going wrong in the background and then you fix it and it just feels so great to yeah to fix it with your own hands yeah <laughs> yeah to kind of troubleshoot and like solve solve that problem wherever the puzzle is at the time um, and then you reap all the, the all the benefits from that so like what's really cool is like through and, I, and you know this is why you know I really promote to the people that I work with is like the importance of a blog and the importance of an Instagram feed the importance of a website all of these things continue to build up your own uh, personal brand which is uh, you know Stephanie and so building uh, that up you know every little piece of content is continuing to help establish like your you know thought leadership and authority in the uh, the travel space you know? uh, so I think that's really cool thanks yeah um, so I guess for maybe on the content creation side what would you, do you have any recommendations for people mm, actually content creation I think this is also one thing I try to tell people or try to show with my content I believe that you don't necessarily need a lot of expensive equipment for example because I think a lot of people still think that if you want to take nice pictures you need one of these super expensive cameras and 20 lenses and I don't know and actually when I go traveling and how I create my content is pretty simple I would say I travel with my small tablet notebook to be able to you know, write down and go to the internet and have something, a keyboard and stuff like that. And I have my camera and I have my smartphone. And from time to time I take the drone. But this is the technical equipment I take. And for example, on my Instagram, all my pictures I share there are mobile only. So that means I don't use camera pictures for my Instagram and I think looking at my pictures from this perspective makes it even nicer because it shows that also with your smartphone you are able to take great pictures and yeah for me it's it's um, important to know that you know you can do something like this if you really want to do and yeah I think that's awesome, and I that's, I was gonna ask you that uh, I saw on your Instagram handle that um, hashtag mobile only. Yeah. Which, and now that you have explained that, it kind of that's even more inspirational, I think, for folks out there that it's accessible. Like what you're scrolling through on that feed is the device that Stephanie used to take photos. Yeah, and it's a device I have in my pocket, mm -hmm. and it's a device I can take anywhere. It's a yeah. It's, it's small and it, it brings out these kind of pictures. So it's actually more about the, the angle or the perspective and yeah. 
yeah. but not about the equipment itself. That's awesome. So that means that you, listener, can do this if you, um, <laughs> you know, you have a smartphone. Like there's endless possibilities, and so I think yeah, you bring up a good point. So I wonder, you know, I'm always curious about this. And I always like kick this about around with other creatives. Is that like, you know, I don't. I wonder why it is that people believe that you know once I buy that five thousand dollar or ten thousand dollar camera, I'll eventually start be able. I'll be able to do this stuff, or just assuming that because someone has a really nice camera that they're really good and that's not always the case it's kind of those two things together where um, you know someone has worked really hard at their craft and that's why they're like technically sound but then you just put icing on the cake with having the nice equip like the better equipment but they could take you know whatever uh, camera that you give them and probably produce a, a nice camera and there's challenges like that out there where someone uses a you know old camera from the 80s yeah. and still produces something really great or, uh, right. So. This also gives a lot of opportunities. I mean, you don't have to. Of course, you can go with a really old camera and then put a really, yeah, different um, taste or how yeah. do you say it? Different. Yeah, kind of retro. Yeah. Uh, retro feel to it. I think. Yeah. So it's really interesting. Yeah, it's kind of. And I was listening to another creative person. It's like kind of the limitations of whatever the device is. Uh, you you put those on 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 whatever the device is. So. Um, you know, sometimes there, you can create something really cool out of low resolution things. You just have to be creative on how you go about it. Yeah, so. and I think that's the most important part to to do what you like and then create the brand around that and not try to do what everyone else is doing. And yeah, really find your niche and what you're good at and what you really like to do. And then you can build your brand around that and then somehow it works. Yeah. I think a good example for that is like speaking about um, my work is I'm working with Samsung for example so I don't only you know promote or work with um, travel like really travel companies in the end yeah I'm a brand ambassador for Samsung since 2016 so I'm it's one of my long-term partners I work with and for me it just comes natural because promoting a phone on my Instagram for me is clear because I produce all my Instagram pictures with my mobile phone so there's no reason why I shouldn't do this and this is also I think one of the most um, important things I would tell anyone who asks so how do you do this and what would you recommend is kind of do what you want to do and really be passionate about and yeah then in the end, it, it, it will help you to create everything around it. Um, because if you stick to that, and if you really stick to what you believe in, then you have a much better chance to survive in this you know, whole <laughs> digital world. I know, everyone's making noise. <laughs> no, I think that's great uh, that you bring that up, and like really defining who you are and not trying to copy someone else. And, you know, especially in the early stages, you know, finding out, you know, just getting those reps, I think is the biggest thing, is getting out there and practicing whatever it is that you're doing. So just going out there and taking the photos and maybe getting inspired by someone. But if you're going out there just solely trying to recreate what someone else is doing, one, um, it's unoriginal. Um, two, you're, uh, you're just always going to be seeing yourself as second best to whatever it is that you're trying to be. So I think really define, like trying to be different is actually, you know, as much as like, I think when you're growing up, you want to blend in, you want to be like everyone else, but being different and being unique is actually really, really good in the, in the creative world, especially in photography. Yeah, totally agree. Um, yeah, so I think that's awesome. And I think, you know, one of the ways you're defining yourself is by inspiring people. You know, I think sometimes people go out and they capture something or say, hey, I you know, had this food or so good or whatever, but you're actually, you know, trying to empower people to also take up traveling too uh, with a smile you know <laughs> it doesn't need to be this thing that you're dreading it can be you know something really exciting and um, you never know what can, what what the possibilities are hopefully the audio is coming through for the audience I know there's just like a giant you know, blender going on in the background but um, yeah so yeah kind of finding that passion so did your so you kind of fused two passions three passions together you know passion for travel which came in around in 2007 but I'm guessing you were taking photos and and writing way before that, right? Yeah, actually the photography came with the traveling. I 
I really can't remember any time where I didn't have a camera with me while I was somewhere traveling. Like, yeah. So the photography really comes with the traveling and then a little later on I put on the, the writing. Yeah, interesting. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's great. So it all kind of came together almost, uh, what, 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 what year are we in? Over 10 years ago. 13 years. 13 years? No. Um, like the blog exists since 2013. Yeah. Okay. So, so almost seven years yeah. and then... Wow. Yeah. And also the Instagram. Yeah. Also, I don't know when I joined Instagram. I think 2015 or so. Yeah. Back then, back in the days where Instagram still was a different platform somehow, and yeah. where it all was about the community and not only about how many likes you get and seeing the pictures only on your smartphone, but really. Back then we met, we actually really met and went for photo walks in our cities and yeah, together with a friend of mine, we started to build up the community in Frankfurt, like the town, the city I lived in Germany for yeah. a couple of years and yeah, this was, yeah, it was back in the days where Instagram really was about the community and it was not only about pointing out how great pictures you have, it was like everyone you know got inspired by each other and you got to know people you would have never met in other ways but just um, because photography was one of our yeah hobbies and passions we we met and we walked through the city and took pictures and we shared it on the instagram and this is how the community grew and this is somehow yeah, I kind of stick to that, at least like on the Instagram that I'm still doing the pictures with my mobile device and not switching to professional camera. I mean, I have a yeah. camera and a lot of pictures on my blog, for example, are um, taken with a camera. But for me, Instagram is still kind of yeah important that this is my kind of niche that I'm really convinced that I only want to share mobile pictures and this is what I do. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And I think you brought up a good point of like community is a huge thing. Um, when, it, when you're talking about that Frankfurt community, I'm guessing you won the community of photographers also in the area. It sounds like you guys went kind of did photo projects together, you know, for fun or, you know, maybe to be, boost your portfolio or just to have a network and then also the community of people in the area that probably like went hashtag Frankfurt yeah. and would see your work, right? And it kind of brought people together. You showed nice, um, you know, areas of the city. I wish there was a little bit more of that in a city like Portland. I think there's a, a good amount, but there's always, you know, more that we could do to like build up the creative community here. Yeah, but I think actually there's a lot of cool things going on in Portland and I experience it as a really community friendly city yeah. and I really like that about Portland that it's I mean that's also how we met you know we just met on a during a yeah event um, which was um, basically a community event as well and yeah I, I like the fact that Portland is so open minded and you can yeah. just go out and meet people and you just need to find places or communities of people who have the kind of same interest and then you go there and everybody's kind of welcoming you it's not you know it's it's easy to join communities mm -hmm. and this is what i like about portland okay yeah i guess i guess you're right i uh, <laughs> i guess when i think of the I, I don't know i was thinking like maybe like the just like a photographer's community or like videographers but i guess there are there are a good amount and it, it's just kind of a matter of looking mm -hmm. out there. So I guess like recommendations for people listening is like, you know, go to the events page for your city and usually, you know, it's put on by a civic group or by a nonprofit, you know, figure out who your favorite yeah. nonprofit is and, you know, they'll have an events calendar and just put it onto your own calendar and you know, show up and, um, yeah, being a part of those communities is pretty huge, especially have other people to bounce ideas off of or collaborate on projects. Um, yeah, I would love that if yeah, our listeners um, have some yeah. ideas where to join a nice photography community, I would be in for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we create a digital uh, community yeah. too, which is always another option. Nowadays, you, you can kind of gather so many people around a, a Facebook platform or around an email chain or a LinkedIn group. So, um, 
I guess so talking about you know communities and you know, travel and being able to make things come together like uh, maybe you want to talk about like uh, working with Samsung or like like do you like did you approach them or did they approach you on the sponsorship or um actually yeah back then I approached them because they started to build this influencer program and community in Germany it's like for German photographers and yeah I was really interested and a friend of mine joined them and I really liked the the community part of it and yeah then I reached out to them and they gave me a, um, one of their devices to test it and I handed in some pictures and so we liked each other I guess so yeah, yeah in the end um, yeah I became part of this community and it's it's a growing community but it's still kind of it's only I think not even 40 people in it so people it's basically a German community but a lot of people travel and yeah I live abroad so I can share different perspectives yeah. in Germany yeah that's really cool yeah it sounds like a good good relationship and yeah you get to bounce ideas around with other Samsung photographers do you ever connect with anyone when they come through Portland or anything like that? yeah yeah oh. yeah I mean yeah it's it's a great connection and um, we meet from time to time also like during the year when a new product is, is launched so we will have the chance to meet and see each other and yeah but I also made friends during through this community a friend of mine for example she will go on a road trip um, along the west coast and she will of course now stop in Portland <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome a cactus knows how to survive it can endure scorching heat limited rainfall and defends itself against critters daily. Your business is no different. To survive harsh conditions, it's important to develop deep roots using media content that'll continuously nourish and support your marketing efforts day after day. Tactus Media is here to help you determine a strategy and create media content. Together, let's map out the next sequence of videos, podcasts, and social media to help your business thrive. Work with Tactus Media, media tactics that stick. Ouch! Visit tactusmedia.com to learn more. Okay, Stephanie, I do not know where this left off. We are having technical difficulties, but that's like a big part of um, this industry is trying to troubleshoot on the fly and just still make things work. Um, so we just have one lavalier, that Mike, that we're going to pass back and forth, and I think, you know, we kind of went into passion and what gets people you know how, why it's good to just pursue what makes you happy when it comes to doing your craft and then we talked about the different communities that are very important um, to be able to be successful in this industry is like meeting other professionals and trying to connect with others out there um, do you want to maybe we've talked about maybe some of the pros do you want to talk about maybe some of the challenges of the industry um, and what people can try to work on yeah we can do that I think yeah, a lot of the or the biggest challenges, um, the biggest challenges nowadays, I think that yeah, the digital world grew so fast and changed so fast over the last years. So when I started working in online marketing, like still for that German travel company, everything was kind of still about to start, and it was funny because we also started working with bloggers and building blogger relations and started Twitter and stuff like that and nowadays it's when you look back it's only I would say yeah, a couple of years ago but now it seems like everyone has access to all these social channels and yeah the kids I mean they grew up with it and I think the biggest challenge is to stand out because you know everyone is kind of able somehow to become a YouTube star <laughs> not become a star but set up a YouTube channel and build up a blog and stuff like this so yeah the biggest challenge is to stand out and this I think is not only for the influencers and yeah people like me but also for the companies um, I think it's really important also for small companies to be visible online and to have kind of a it mustn't it doesn't have to be big or huge but you need to be on the web because otherwise you're kind of not existing 
Yeah, I think that's great. Um, yeah, the whole the entire online market has like I guess matured a, a lot in just a short amount of time, in less than ten years. You know, like you said, there's so many other people producing stuff that if you're not producing stuff, then you kind of don't exist to a degree. Like, yeah, you're in, in the physical space, but if people want to, you know, follow up and learn more about you, having these different channels built out, having a website presence, having a LinkedIn, social media channels are just really key to making that um, possible. Do you have any tips for people when it comes to content creation? You know, anything that comes to, like to mind for you when it comes to strategy or you know how to build up a good flow for producing content? Yeah, good flow is a good point because I think, uh, yeah, you kind of need a flow and a structure to be able to post frequently and, you know, create the content in the meantime. And I think everyone who wants to start, I would just advise to start and don't, I mean, I think you have to have a certain level of a strategy and know about what you want to do and have a certain how do you say, but a certain, yeah, feeling and mission where you want to go. But by putting too much effort into the strategy without getting started will also kind of hold you back. So I think it's a, it's important to have a mixture and I think a lot of things establish like on the flow while you're going, while you produce stuff, while you try things and then it, it happens to me all the time as well. So I'm constantly producing content I, and I always find ways to do it better or ways to do it in a different way. So yeah, I think just keep it going would be my advice. I think that's awesome. Yeah, because it, yeah, if you all if you do all the strategy and don't do any execution, well, you haven't really made any progress. You spent so much time thinking about thinking that you never actually, you know, Made, made anything come to light. So I would say, um, yeah, I think that's great. So like, just start going, just go with it. The only thing I would add, maybe like kind of piggyback would be um, like doing an, ana doing an, al an analysis of yourself, like, or ask feedback from people. Um, you know, hey, what do you think about these things? Like, do you think there's anything I could work on? Do you do that sometimes with your audience? Ask them for feedback or what, what they'd like to hear? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely do that because, you know, you're kind of living in your own bubble <laughs> all the time and I think it's really important to get feedback and you don't necessarily get feedback all the time, so it's always a good um, yeah, point and always good to ask for feedback because then you will get feedback and I think nowadays people are actually more open and would also tell you if they don't like anything. So it's always good to have feedback because then you can adjust. I mean, it doesn't mean that you have to change everything because some people don't like what you're doing or don't like certain things. But it's always great to have a yeah impression and a way to go and things yeah keep things flexible a little bit. Yeah. Now I hear you're kind of playing like uh, two sides two sides of the coin. Like yeah, being flexible and. Um, my question is, you, you have you know, a pretty good sized audience, um, do you take into some of the comments that people make into account um, or does it you know, kind of dictate the way that you take uh, the direction of your work or do you kind of find a balance of like, you know, taking, in, taking the feedback that other people have or comments and then also pursuing what makes you happy and the things that you want to produce? Yeah, I think I do both. I um, always ask for feedback and it's important to me. But in the end, I think I would always still do what what I like to do. It, it's, I think, a little bit like um, the, the Instagram story I was just talking about is a good example for that. I mean, if I would just do what everybody does and what every kind of photographer advises you, you know, you have to have high quality pictures on your Instagram to be... Um, to be relevant and you know that people share and like your pictures I'm still sticking with mobile photography because I'm convinced about it and I think this is the most important part also when it comes to promotion and stuff actually really wouldn't promote any product or things or yeah things and products I'm not convinced about and I think this is really important to stay authentic and for me 
it's one of the most important things that I'm authentic and I don't want to, you know, show my readership anything only client wants to show me. It's I need to be convinced about it to really promote it on my blog and on my channels. That's awesome, Stephanie. And I think your audience probably really appreciates that that you care about them and that you want them to have you know a good experience and that uh, you're trying to provide a really good value to them and provide information that makes their lives easier. So I think what you're doing is really great. I'm sure you know you get a lot of people that are appreciative of that. So that's awesome. Um, any tips for like if you could go back and do it again? Would you um, start with the blog? Start with photos? Uh, do you have any tips for um, kind of for people that don't have a, a channel and they're looking to start something? Do you have any advice there for how they should go about that? Actually, I think there are a lot of tips and basically endless tips <laughs> you could give someone how to do it and how to not do it and how to get started and things like that. But I think one, like, actually the most important thing I would tell anybody is find a topic and if you want to start a business like this, only do it if you're really passionate about the topic you want to talk about because there are a lot of ups and downs in the meantime and this is just natural. And I went through a lot of ups and downs as well and it, it starts with all technical issues and you know things like that and constantly producing content and you know this is there is actually a lot of work behind a blog like this and also if you do other yeah have other channels and most of the times this work isn't visible on the blog and yeah you know people only see the great stories you wrote about and the nice places you've been and I think that's also the reason why nowadays if you ask kids um, what they want to be when they're grown up, what they want to become, what profession <laughs> they want to, yeah, they would answer, or a lot of them nowadays answer, they want to become a blogger or they want to become a YouTube star. And I think this is really scary actually because it looks like it's only fun and for me it is a lot of fun but there is also a lot of work behind that. and. A lot of work actually happens for me in my office. I'm actually not always traveling. I'm, I'm not a digital nomad. Like I have a travel hub and a base and a home and I have an office. So a lot of times I just sit on my chair and sit on my desk and write and do financials or I don't know, do whatever. But um, yeah, there's actually more work behind that. and. Yeah, you need to be really passionate about the topic you want to talk um, because this, I think, will drive you through all the ups and downs. I think that I think that's awesome, um, and really loving the process. And I think, yeah, a lot of those kids that do aspire to want to be, you know, YouTuber, or a blogger, or a podcast, or whatever it might be, um, yeah, just start and see what that process feels like. Because, yeah, they're seeing the end result. They're seeing the shiny, uh, you know, thing that's already been doctored up because you photoshopped it, or they, you've already done, like, ten revisions on a blog, but they don't see that. You only see the end result. So, I, you know, get your feet wet, try it, um, and see if you love the process, because the process is really what you're doing, spending most of your time doing. Um, what everyone else has seen is just the, the end result. So I think that's great. Um, I guess for having people like find their passion and figure out, maybe you have some thoughts. You know, I'm, I'm going to be speaking to some students in a couple of weeks um, about finding your passion and, and how to go about that. Um, do you have any recommendations for, for people to, for how they can find their passion? I believe this is just the thing you feel. And maybe you don't know that is your passion yet but if you look deeper into it you will find out over certain time that this is your passion for me you know back then when i went to cape town i didn't know that if anybody told me that i will be blogging and you know sharing all my stuff online i wouldn't have believed that back then so i think but i still stick to the traveling and you know they are always so many different opportunities to kind of yeah um, talk about it it's not like a blog is the resolution or the re for everything it's like you can also do different things I mean you're doing a podcast and this is great I mean 
your passion is um, talking about online and marketing and you also try to help people and give them tips and valuable information. You could also do a blog, but you decided for a podcast. So I guess there is also some passion for, you know, interviewing people and audio recording and stuff like that. So there are many ways around your topic and there are many ways how you could um, get started. There's not only one option, there are a lot of options and I think just it's trial and error as well so try something and if you don't like it try something else and then I think by doing this you will find out what your passion is. I think that's awesome, well said and think and good good uh, like analysis of kind of what we're doing here because yeah you, you take your passion and then you figure out whatever medium it is that you're really good at conveying that information and then for myself maybe I'm just lazy I just like to be able to talk and uh, not have to like write and curate all of it but and I also you know I like I like the fact that you can add music into a podcast and it's longer form content and like you mentioned meeting people is really cool um, which you can do that in a blog but it just uh, It just comes off a little bit differently when it's not when it's someone's voice versus what's written. But um, no, I think that's great, um, Stephanie. This has been awesome. We've had to work through a handful of you know technical difficulties throughout this podcast, but I'm I'm really thankful for uh, you coming onto the, onto the show. I have a few notes for um, how people can find you, but um, maybe if you have a few like kind of closing remarks and uh, how how would you want people to connect with you after the show. Um, actually, yeah, everybody who wants to see what I'm doing can just um, go on my blog and my Instagram. Um, yeah, it's called Smile for Travel. As you said in the beginning, it's um, smile, then the four as the number, and then travel. And the, um, yeah, the website is smilefortravel.de slash en. So it's like, because it's uh, basically, I started as a German blog, it's de for Germany. Um, but I'm sure Brian can put it in the um, comments or in the as well. Yeah, and my Instagram is also called Smile for Travel. So if you type in Smile for Travel, you should find me. And actually, all my social media channels are called Smile for Travel. So it's actually if you find the blog, everything is linked there, and it should be pretty easy to find. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, Stephanie. Um, yeah, and, and to piggyback on that, you've done a great job of getting all of those handles, make it really easy for people that just smile for travel. Um, and you, yeah, feel free to check it out. You'll see on our Instagram all the great photos of the places that you've been to all around the world, um, as well as on the Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Um, and I'll put the, the link to your, sh to your website in the show notes. And yeah, hashtag mobile only. Uh, thanks for coming on to the show, Stephanie. Thanks for having me, Brian. This is awesome. All right, that's a wrap. I want to say a big thanks for tuning into the Media Marketing Podcast. Please subscribe to get notifications for new episodes, which are coming out every Thursday morning, or at least we're striving for that. Uh, feel free to visit our Facebook page where you can like and join the Media Marketing community. This is a good resource for collaborating, sharing ideas with other media creators, marketers, and those just looking to build their network. So until next time.